horrors from beyond the flare, artifacts from an ancient civilization, and lots of spooky vibes. This is Candela Obscura. In case you have been living in an Eldritch Void for the last few weeks, Candela Obscura is the name of both a new game from Critical Role and the actual play production which just launched. While the quick start guide for the game is now available from the Darrington Press website, the VOD for episode 1 will not be available on YouTube until June 8th, but while we wait for the mysteries the first episode contains, let's take a look at the setting and lore of Candela Obscura. The game is set in the Fairlands, a fictional land that is similar in many ways to our world at the turn of the 19th century, with one major difference, the presence of magic. That's magic? with a K. <laughs> this magic is normally contained behind a barrier known as the flare, but occasionally areas of the flare can weaken, resulting in thinnings where horrors can push their way into the world. While most ordinary people of the Fairlands have never encountered the supernatural, a secret society called Candela Obscura seeks to protect the city of New Fair from the dangers of the paranormal. Players of the game will roleplay as members of this secretive organization. The setting takes a lot of inspiration from the gothic horror and sort of Lovecraftian genre, though the designers have gone to lengths to try and remove some of the more problematic elements of that genre, stating, when crafting your character it is crucial to avoid the harmful stereotypes often present in the historical and horror genres. And disability and mental illness are facets of the human experience and are not convenient narrative beats behind evil actions or evil people. So with that, let us dive in to the Fairlands. Long ago, around 2000 years ago, there was a thriving city now referred to as Old Fair. It was led by powerful alchemists who harnessed magic to power their city and society, and by all known accounts was a leading force throughout the world. Old Fair was built around a zipper twat, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, a ziggurat, where the alchemists attempted to hold and use the magical energy. However, dabbling in these forces comes with a cost known as bleed, the corruptive force left behind by magic. The alchemists were not able to keep up with the overwhelming amounts of bleed, which twisted and corrupted the people of Old Fair. The city was destroyed when a thinning was ruptured and the city fell to the horrors that were unleashed, and a rift was torn in the sea, now called the Vast Chasm. As the waters surged, they drowned Old Fair and its people and wiped away all their magical innovations and inventions. The artifacts of this civilization still lurk in tombs and catacombs waiting to be discovered, but monstrous horrors also await those brave adventurers who dare to delve. Dun, dun, dun. In the present day, that is the turn of the 19th century present day, the Fairlands is a region located in the northern country of Hale. It is nestled within a fertile, temperate valley, making agriculture the Fairlands' primary industry. The city of New Fair was built upon the remnants of Old Fair, and as such, it's straddles the ancient alchemical history of the past, as well as the emerging innovation of the future. A number of locations surround New Fair, including Seasway, a fishing village located on the eastern coast, Todegrass, a rural and agricultural region to the south, The Verge, an area of cliffs that overlooks Vast Chasm and which is home to an ancient towering monolith covered in ancient fair and riding as you do. The Bridalborn Mountains to the east, where some folk live and are often governed internally since the police force struggle to exert their will so far out of New Fair. The Scarlet Wood, whose trees produce a hallucinogenic sap which is illegal for use in drugs and alcohol, therefore creating a black market around those products. And Westrek, a war-torn landscape to the west of the city that is still filled with the dangerous remnants of the most recent war. While the rest of the world is undergoing a decade-long event called the Shiver, where the temperature has dropped to such a degree that agriculture is difficult, the Fairlands are somewhat protected by the surrounding geography and are still able to farm the lands. This makes the area highly sought after, resulting in attacks from other nations as they attempt to seize control of the landscape. The last war began in 1898. It raged for six years when the Fairlands were attacked by Otherware, a country from across the Glass Sea. It was only through the invention and innovation of electricity that the Fairlands were able to secure a victory three years ago. The use of electricity has now spread from New Fair to all of Hale. Following the war, New Fair has been flooded with refugees, making it a bustling cosmopolitan city with many cultures throughout Hale represented. The citizens themselves are still dealing with the aftermath of the war, which was brutal and resulted in much suffering. The Fairlands themselves are governed by three branches, known as the Triumvirate, which in theory are supposed to be independent branches, but in reality they are connected in a myriad of ways and corruption runs rife. The Ascendancy is the religious branch, led by an appointed official called the Ascendant. Primacy is the central government, headed by an elected premier who leads members of chambers to establish the laws of society and govern the city of Newfair and its surrounds. 
The periphery are the police force, and many Theran citizens see them as a corrupt, violent hand of the government who uses this access to advanced military technologies from the war to keep the population in line. The city of Newfair is made up of a number of districts. Briar Green is a district of beautiful green parklands and homes for the affluent, and the Eaves are another district for the elite made up of buildings directly built upon the roofs of old Theron buildings which have been exposed over time. This district is the home of the Premier. Then, built directly below the eaves is South Suffolk, a lower class district built into the ruins that the affluent live upon. The electricity here is not very reliable, making it a somewhat unsafe, especially at night, district. Hollow Harbour is the docks region where ships arrive to access all of Hale. This district brings in a lot of money and trade into Newfair. Nine Irons is where the police force, the periphery, is primarily located with their headquarters, prison, and hanging grounds all kept within this district. It also contains the Eastwick landfill where a shanty town has been built by some of the most marginalized members of New Fair. Red Lamp is the arts and sex district where you can find almost any kind of entertainment. Despite some other pretty shitty aspects of the city, sex work is legal in the Fairlands <coughs> and should be everywhere. <coughs> the Steel is the home of industry in the city and where you'll find factories and laborers. The Shrive Line is a religious district with a church to the ascendancy and many historical religious buildings, as well as homes that are often occupied by religious folk who wish to be close to the church. The Seidel is where the middle class live with lots of residents residential neighborhoods and small businesses. It is one area of the city which has electric lights on at night, making it somewhat safer than some of the other districts of Newfair. Silverslip is where the government, the primacy, makes it home, and it's filled with courthouses, law offices, and other governmental buildings, as well as wealthy businesses. And finally, the Varnish, which is like downtown. Here you can find restaurants, shops, and bars, as well as the central station for the cable cars that traverse the city. A number of organizations exist within Newfair, including, of course, Candela Obscura, a society that works to protect mankind from the horrors beyond the flare. The organization dates back to Old Fair, when it was created by altruistic scholars who saw the signs of catastrophe approaching as the alchemists of Old Fair continued to pursue the use of magic. Whilst the artifacts and knowledge of Old Fair was buried following the destruction of the city, Candela Obscura endured. They sought out areas of intense bleed and established lighthouses which contained an artifact known as an astrolabe that can keep the bleed at bay. Some of these lighthouses have stood for centuries, while others are more recent. Where the bleed is overwhelming, even these lighthouses can be filled with its corrupting influence. Many urban legends and folktales have arisen about these lighthouses amongst the common population of the Fairlands. As well as establishing and maintaining these lighthouses, Candela Obscura also created an interdimensional vault known as the Pharos. This vault contains paranormal phenomena in order to lock them away from the world and has been rebuilt many times on an, inter on an interdimensional space <laughs> can never get that word right, between the world and the flare. The Pharos is currently in its fourth iteration and Naomi Malik is the current conservator. She controls all access to it. Currently contained within the fourth Pharos is Robin Suarez, a Candela Obscura investigator who encountered intense bleed on their last mission. Candela Obscura is made up of chapters which are spread all across the Fairlands. Each chapter is made up of circles of investigators. In the game, each group of players is known as a circle. These circles are led by a lightkeeper who, after retiring from a life of fieldwork, manages and oversees these investigators investigators giving them assignments. One such lightkeeper is Shyla Badjuri, who is well known for her work in the ruins of Old Fair. And of course, during the actual play production, Talazan Jaffe is acting as the lightkeeper for the audience. But where there are those seeking to do good in the world, there are those seeking power and influence. The Exoteric Order of New Sciences, or Eons, is a rival organization who wants to return to the days of integrating magic and technology for the purposes of gain, profit, and opportunity. They have a laboratory located in the steel where they work on magical engineering and alchemy. To deal with the bleed, they have developed adjuvant, an experimental antidote. The society was founded by the Dryden twins. Elvira runs the business side of things, and Edric is usually in the laboratory working on experiments. The periphery also takes an interest in the occult, with a small branch known as the Office of Unexplained Phenomena, the OUP. They strive to keep the presence of supernatural phenomena a secret from the general population. Headed by Baxter White, the OUP will go to great lengths to keep the occult a secret, and often hide away citizens affected by bleed in the Grey Slate Sanatorium. What assignments the Lightkeeper sends their investigators out on is, for now, a mystery to be uncovered as we watch Matthew Mercer guide the first set of players of Candela Obscura and while we await the release of the full game in 2024. Let me know what your favourite part of this new setting is so far. I'll be playtesting this game this week with my group and I'm really excited to jump into the world of New Fair. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my Candela episode 1 breakdown coming out on June 8th, and you can also check out my latest Bells Hills breakdown right here. Bye! Oh my god. Can you, Clementine, can you please get out of there? What the hell? Hiding in the bushes.